Dakota Destinations on Midco Sports Network is presented by VisitPeerSD.com. Welcome to Dakota Destinations. Well, there's plenty of places to learn about wildlife in the Midwest, but on this episode, our ventures are going to take us to the plains of South Dakota and to the land of 10,000 lakes. We hit the water in West Central Minnesota in search of largemouth bass with Bassmaster Gary Kamrowski. But before we get to that, we're going to go to Central South Dakota near Pier to take on a less popular animal, the Prairie Rattler. So with that, let's get started on our first journey. We join a group of hunters who, unlike most, enjoy finding dangerous creatures. I'm just glad we got today. Today, really? I, mean, I was worried all day. week. Oh, I was worried, oh, no, the weather's going to be Sometimes you want to be careful stepping out, because I have had them underneath my truck. Perfect. Uh -huh. No wind. What do we got for a tent, Ben? Bet you it's 70 by now, ain't it? Nice. And no wind, that's what's gonna be gold about it. These are just snake shaps. Protection. <laughs> that's, that's always a good thing. The baggier, the better oh, on yeah, the snake no shaps, because they'll hit them and let them, let them find some shaps and not <laughs> meat. <laughs> Basically, we got, uh, I use fishing rods that I broke over the years and put a treble hook on them, cut off one, uh, cut off one side of it. Uh, we do grind the barbs down so we don't tear the, tear the skin on them. And basically, these, these snakes are going to go in these dog holes, and so you're pulling them out with these to where you can't get them with the tongs. Once you get them pulled out, uh, then the tongs come in handy for... Picking them up, yeah. And if they're laying on top of the, if they're laying on top of the holes, well, you're just grabbing them with the tongs. But the hooks are probably the handiest tool that uh, that we carry. Anyway, these are just our snake tongs, <laughs> just our grabbers. Like Kirby said, that if you, uh, if they're laying outside the hole, you just grab them with these guys. If they get in the hole, you. Now mine's not a fishing pole; it's a golf club handle, but these are slick. Well, right now we're south of Fort Pier um, on the National Grasslands, um, hunting uh, Prairie Dog Town for uh, the Prairie Rattler. Um, as we're working our way out, we always just check every hole. We kind of got an area where we want to go to, but you never know where these snakes are really going to be at. So you always look down while you're walking out because you can step right over the top of them. Now we're kind of getting into an area where it might get pretty active. <laughs> okay, here's one. I got one in this hole over here. Oh yeah, looks like a good snake. Two of them. Two of them? Okay, you want me up there to grab one? Got them both. Okay. One went down. Watch those. Yes! Two good ones, though. <laughs> Double! <laughs> okay, we're not done yet here. Let's if you want to bucket them, hurry up and bucket them. Oh, there's one going down. Yep. I'll bucket these. Oh, it's awesome fun. <laughs> that, that's why I'm out here. Anything outdoors is fun. This is this is fantastic. Now, what's a real what's a real rush is carrying around a bucket of snakes that are rattling all the time and listening for rattles out here in the field. That's always a good time. Let's get them. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Okay. I got one. I can't get them. Oh, I missed him. Okay. Oh, there's another one. Grab that one. Where? Right there. Because he's coming in from the grass. 
when you really get into them like we are, it's only a small part of a dog now. They never take over the whole outer edge. Oh, it looks like the whole family, two medium-sized snakes, and there were two little ones. I got one, both the adults, and then one smaller. All right. <laughs> Ben, you want your bucket? Yeah, bring it, bucket boy. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to carry anything else today or no? A lot of the times, you may hunt from the vehicle this way, but when you're walking back, you still have that chance of actually running across one. And so guy's gotta be just as careful going back as he does going forward. Been counting or no? No, I missed count. That's okay. We'll count. We'll count them again. We might. We might get the girls and just come back and hit this again. Go grab the JV. <laughs> <laughs> That's foot in there. Enough sets. It's kind of been through all three of, you know, there's I have two younger sisters and all three of us have kind of taken a, taken an interest in it. Perfect. Friends don't have too much to say about it anymore because it feels like kind of that's expected. But a lot of people that you come across and you tell them, well, my dad's, you know, Ben Smith, the snake man. Rattlesnake man. Oh my god, he's crazy. <laughs> This is a little different area. Typically we're hunting on the other side of the fence, but uh, the boys ran in some snakes the other day, so we just uh, decided to hunt this. All right, there's one. Right out in the tall grass, boys. He is not a happy guy. Not a bad looking snake, but he's not a happy camper right now. He's not crazy about that camera. Yeah, I'd walk around this bad boy a little bit. If there was, if there was snakes in that hole and this one was outside of it, I'd walk around it a little bit. He is not, he's not a, yeah, he's not a camera. Not a camera person at all. <laughs> This snake here, he's got eight rattles and he's still got his pre button, which is pretty unusual for a snake this size. They usually break off just out in the country. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in the button. So that's a nice rattlesnake to have. Well, you're going to have to go in the bucket. There's your new home for tonight. When we come back, we hit the lakes near Fergus Falls, Minnesota in search of largemouth bass with one of the best fishermen in the area. Dakota Destinations on Midco Sports Network is presented by VisitPeerSD.com. Dakota Destinations on Midco Sports Network is presented by VisitPeerSD.com. Welcome back to Dakota Destinations. When it comes to bass fishing in West Central Minnesota, Gary Kamrowski is one of the best. So let's go ahead and meet Kamrowski, who joins Dan Hammer out on the water in search for some largemouth action near Fergus Falls, Minnesota. I like late August, September, when the frogs really do move. Right. Um, but a largemouth will but still, chase and attack a frog anytime. 
it's, on it? It's con yes, it, it will. It's the conditions. You know, low light is the best condition yeah. that you can have. And today, so far, it looks like that's going to be the case. I think we're going to have some cloud cover most of the day. And that's I think this afternoon, maybe they're talking some sun. And that would be good because this afternoon when we go, my, my plan is to fish undercuts. And yeah. those are better when the sun is out because the fish will more relate to that type of structure. Yep. And we we'll try it. And if they're there, they're there. If they're not, we adjust and right. move from there. So. Typically, lily pads are going to be in a, a dirtier you know, bottom. Yeah. You know, a lot of wild rice now exists in some of these lakes around the area. So that'll come in and be more dominant. Um, and the fish will be in there too. There was a fish that went right there. there. There's a little bit of a opening here between the two points and it goes into a little bit of another bay back there. And usually there's going to be a fish on one of the two points. So we're going to, we're going to go up there and hope that there, there is today. Got to go back and get them if that's where they're at. That's right. Fish on. Northern pike. A little northern, huh? I believe the bass have vacated the shallow water, and you know, there's still a few pike in the lake. Yep. How about that? Well, you know what they say about the first fish of the day? Doesn't What's matter that, what the species is; it's the most important fish of the day. <laughs> it breaks the ice. Yes, it does. You got something going now, Gary. Yep, this is a, it's kind of, it's a, it's a bass versus the northern we had in the previous cast. So. Now back, that's a shallow water fish. It is, you know, it's back to back cast, it just goes to show you. Oh yet. my. You, know, you get a, a northern on one cast, and the next cast you get a nice bass. That is a nice bass, Gary. Yeah, it is a nice fish. Nice belly on her, you can see she's in feeding. So yeah, nice bass. Chunker one. Fat. And again, you know, the, the fish aren't as aggressive as we were hoping. You know, so that's why we, you know, backed off from the top water lures and now we're going with a, a Texas rig plastic preserve here. So that's a good sign that when, the, when you get the bait there, the fish will bite. There you go. See if there's a few more in here. Nice bass. Nice bass. Fish of the day. Oh no! Fun. We got the feel to hit. That fish hit me one time. I pitched it back underneath that tree branch. The fish hit me a second time. Really nice bass as you just saw. And he just wanted to be released before we had a chance to take another picture of him. How much fun is this, folks? That's uh, three fish and three casts. We were going to leave. Sometimes if you tell the fish, OK, that's fine, we're leaving this lake, they uh, decide otherwise. Gary, Minnesota this past year changed its rules a bit on uh, the bass season. Just tweaked it a little bit. Yeah, they did, Dan. Um, you know, last year they voted legislatively. They, they made the change so that this year, uh, starting with the walleye opening weekend, you can catch and release bass for the first two weeks of the season, and then you can, of course, keep them on the traditional opening day. Right. So right. it's a, a nice switch. You good with that? You like that? It, you know, I do. I, I am I'm good with it. You know, there's a, oh, there's a lot of concern about people taking bass off the nest and you know keeping them or just moving them. It's changed so much I think with the research it still may impact them a little bit 
but bass fishing in itself has changed it. It's catch and release. Yeah. You know, you just don't see a lot of people that keep them. Right. Sure, there still are, uh, but they're not the prime target for eating fish like, of course, walleye and panfish down. And probably the people who are taking advantage of that, that bonus time, as we call it, are your most ardent bass fishermen who also are used to practicing conservation. I, I believe that to be so, too. I think that's a good statement. When we return, Dan and Gary change up their location and their strategy and find success in a unique place. Dakota Destinations on Midco Sports Network is presented by VisitPeerSD.com. Little change of location here, Gary, different lake. Right, Dan, we're gonna try, the sun came out, and we're gonna go up and try fishing some what we call undercuts, cattail undercuts. There's, oh, probably one to three feet of water in them, it varies, and some points and turns and some wood, and we're hoping that the fish have kind of tucked up underneath there, and we're gonna try, try some Texas rig plastics, some jigs with plastic, and see what works. Again, pinpointing those undercuts. Yes. And in this case, there's a little old beaver hunt right there. I see that. Probably a good spot to start. Well, you know what? Back at the other lake, a beaver lodge produced a fish. It did. That was the nicest oh. one of the day so yeah, far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Good depth here. This is what we like to see. The water levels come up all the rain that we've had here lately. So that's... Got some water then yeah. under the undercuts. Yeah, and that's what you want. You want that, that depth. These strikes, Gary, when they do happen, will they happen fairly tight to the undercut? Yes, they will, and yeah. it's gonna be pretty much instantaneous, usually. Right. And you, know, you drop that bait down there, that's why you drop it in there. You might shake it a little bit, um, but it's instantaneously, and you know, it's kinda neat. They'll pick it up, they'll swim out with it, they'll swim back underneath the undercut with it. Mm. You know, you don't know where they're gonna go, what they're gonna do. Nice. That's the kind of fish we're looking for. Oh, right Gary. Right there, Dan. Gary. Yeah, there we go. That's a honey. And again, look at this little tip here. Where do you yeah, put we got it right on that point there. Yeah, right, right on the point. Right like we were talking about, yeah. Nice fish. Nice, fat fish. Yeah. Healthy fish. Undercuts. Undercuts, Minnesota. That's what we're talking about. You know, it's a great way to catch fish here in Minnesota whether it's a jig or a Texas rig, whatever it is, and you want to go with, you know, some heavy line again and a heavy rod and reel. I've got what we would call flipping sticks, seven foot, six inches, and 65 pound braided line, and a, a good strong gear ratio, fast rod, fast reel. Here she goes. Guess where she went? Back into the undercut. You got it. You betcha. There's been a lot of rain here in some of the area lakes, and there's a culvert right up here, and it's not flowing as it's strong as it was a few days ago, but we're gonna go up to that culvert, and even by the dock here, there's enough current. We're hoping that some fish are gonna be up in that current. Relating to the current. Yep, and it's gonna bring in some typically cooler water. Um, might bring in some bait fish, there'll be some movement. It's just something different. There you we're go. We're gonna see if there's anything okay. The dog sure is curious. He's I think the dog <laughs> sees things in the water. You know, that might be a tip. That might, I, there's probably fish over there then. Look at that dog. I mean, he's on point. Oh, yeah, holy cow. <laughs> it's like cattle up there. Look at him up there. That one? Yep. Nice. Nice fish. Oh, yeah. Nice fish here, Gary. Yep. Top of the water. And again, no major structure here. One dock, but water coming into the lake. Here we go. Catch and release right by the boat, just like we like them. You know, we're gonna fish plastics. We're gonna go, I'm gonna throw this tube and we'll give you a Texas rig, Dan. That worked. There you go. That worked, Gary. Rather than throwing something big, we kind of went with a little more finesse approach. It's a smaller fit. Right. And you know, today is one of those days, Gary. I mean, 
with every spot, we're learning something about what the bass are telling us today. Yeah, they're telling us, you know, they're not traditional spots where you want to be. They're, they're not that active. They're out a little deeper. They're just, they're not where you think they would normally be. That's a nice fish. You know, that one's going to be pushing three, a little over three pounds. <laughs> you got him. You got him. <laughs> well, there's about, what, the fifth presentation, Gary, today? Yeah, on this spot. That, you know, you just got to keep fish on on this spot. Yep. You know, we've been throwing plastic Texas rigs and jigs, and now for something different, we put this topwater frog on just to bring it across there. And we had three hits, and this one finally got it. So, yeah, that's kind of neat. This one's a little bit thin, but hopefully she'll grow up. Wising up. That's why we keep trying different baits. I can, I can still see them swimming around, but their their mood will change. They'll be aggressive. They'll be not aggressive. I think I've kind of broke everything out of the trick box. In so <laughs> I left a few rods at home. Well, Gary, whether you're talking Otter Tail County, where we are now, Becker County, Hubbard County, I mean, the opportunities for bass fishing are endless in this tri-county area, aren't they? they? They really are. I mean. This area, we have phenomenal bass fishing. It's, and it's, it's kind of a well-kept secret, but you do have a lot of tourism in the area, and the bass fishing truly is phenomenal. It's not uncommon to come in lakes like this and catch 20, 30, 40, 50 bass a day, and you know have several nice quality fish. You know We are kind of spoiled. Uh, the, the fishing up here truly is phenomenal. If you're in search of your own largemouth bass adventure, you can visit the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources website that's listed below. Well, that's all that we have for you this week. Be sure to join us next week for more Dakota Destinations.